Hallo, ich hoffe, es geht dir gut. In this video, you will learn about Relativsätze mit Präpositionen in Akkusativ und Dativ. Relativsatz in English is a relative clause. And the relative clause has some specific important features. Number one, it describes a noun more in detail. Meaning, the relative clause describes the noun mentioned in the main clause more in detail. Number two, gender and number is the same. Meaning, the gender and the number of the relative pronoun has to match the gender and the number of the noun you describe more in detail. Number three, it is a Nebensatz, a subordinate clause. And if this all sounds not so familiar to you, we have videos about relative clauses in detail about nominative, accusative and dative, you will find the link down in the description. Because here we talk about Relativsätze mit Präpositionen, right? And there is one more important feature. It gives you the case of the relative pronoun. Now, not in all situations, but in most situations, because as you know, prepositions, most prepositions require a specific case. And therefore, a relative clause with preposition gives you, in most situations, already the case of the relative pronoun. Of course, German, right? There are some special rules, which will be explained later in the bonus tip. But let's do first an example. Ich habe einen Arzt, der gut ist. Ich habe einen Arzt, der gut ist. I have a doctor who is good. Here we have Arzt, which is masculine, singular. We want to describe more in detail in the relative clause. So therefore, the relative pronoun is also masculine, singular. And it's in nominative case, in red. Why? Because it is the subject. Subject is for the nominative case. Ich habe einen Arzt, den ich gut kenne. Ich habe einen Arzt, den ich gut kenne. I have a doctor who I know well. Now here we can see and there is still this Arzt, but there we have this Ich. And Ich is the subject in nominative case, so that's already given. Therefore, the relative pronoun is in Akkusativ. Why? Because of the verb kennen. And a dative sentence, Ich habe einen Arzt, dem ich vertraue. Ich habe einen Arzt, dem ich vertraue. Here, dem, the relative pronoun, is also masculine and singular, but it is in dative case. Why? Because of the verb Vertrauen. Vertrauen is a dative verb. Now let's make an example with a preposition. Ich habe einen Arzt, mit dem ich manchmal einen Kaffee trinke. Ich habe einen Arzt, mit dem ich manchmal einen Kaffee trinke. I have a doctor with whom I sometimes go for a coffee. And here you can see we still have the arts, masculine singular, but we have the preposition mit. And mit is a dative preposition, so therefore the relative pronoun is in dative case. This relative pronoun still refers to arts, so it's still masculine and singular, but has to be in dative because of the preposition mit. Now, there are, of course, other prepositions as well, right, in dative. Here, just a couple of them. Let's do an example with bei, for example. Ich habe einen Freund in Berlin, bei dem ich übernachten kann. Ich habe einen Freund in Berlin, bei dem ich übernachten kann. I have a friend in Berlin at whom I can spend the night or I, at whom I can stay. Oder... Wie heißt der Arzt, bei dem du gestern warst? Wie heißt der Arzt, bei dem du gestern warst? What's the name of the doctor? Literally, at whom you were yesterday. Or what's the name of the doctor? Huh? Who at we were at yesterday. Oder mit von. Von ist auch eine Dativpräposition. Erinnerst du dich an Lea, von der du dein Sofa bekommen hast? Erinnerst du dich an Lea, von der du dein Sofa bekommen hast? Do you remember Lea, of whom you got your couch? Or do you remember Lea, who kind of gave you the couch? Huh? Easier in English, but literally huh? it's like of whom you got her, your couch. Oder 
Das ist das Haus, von dem ich träume. Das ist das Haus, von dem ich träume. That's the house of which I'm dreaming of. Now you see here, still the relative pronoun refers back to the noun mentioned before. So von der is, this der is feminine, singular refers to Lea. Von dem, this dem is neutrum or masculine. Here it's neutrum because das Haus and singular. But it's in dative because of the preposition von. Von is a dative preposition. Let's go to the sentence structure. Just a little quick. It's pretty straightforward. As you can see here, all the examples we just did, it's always first the main clause. You have to start with the main clause. You cannot start with the relative clause. And then number one, first position is the preposition and then the relative pronoun. So always first the preposition right after the comma and then the relative pronoun. Pronoun. Now let's look at some accusative prepositionen, prepositions which only take the accusative case. Zum Beispiel ohne. Hier ist ein Foto von meinen Katzen, ohne die mein Bett sauber wäre. It's a difficult one. Hier ist ein Foto von meinen Katzen, ohne die mein Bett sauber wäre. Here is a picture of my cats, of my two cats without whom my bed would be clean. And this is conjunctive. Because they are there, my bed is not clean. It's not really true, but it would be definitely cleaner if they wouldn't be there. Aber sie sind süß. They're cute. So I totally accepted that there are a couple more here on my bed. Second sentence. Das ist mein Handy, ohne dass ich nicht aus dem Haus gehe. Das ist mein Handy, ohne das ich nicht aus dem Haus gehe. This is my cell phone, without which I don't leave the house. Oder eine andere Präposition ist für. Tom hat eine Freundin, für die er regelmäßig kocht. Tom hat eine Freundin, für die er regelmäßig kocht. Tom has a girlfriend, for who he cooks regularly. Oder ist das die Prüfung, für die du schon wochenlang lernst? Ist das die Prüfung, für die du schon wochenlang lernst? Is this the exam which you are kind of preparing for for weeks? Is this the exam for which you are studying already for weeks? And here the same thing. We have the relative pronouns is Freundin and die, so singular, feminine and singular. Relative pronoun is also fem feminine and singular, but it's accusative because of the preposition für. Same goes for the second example. Die Prüfung is also feminine, singular, accusative because of the preposition für. Now, auf. Auf is also a preposition, but which case do we need to use with auf? Zum Beispiel, hast du ein Tablet, auf dem du schreiben kannst? Hast du ein Tablet, auf dem du schreiben kannst? Do you have a tablet on which you can write? Or, hier ist der Markt, auf den wir morgen früh gehen. Hier ist der Markt, auf den wir morgen früh gehen. Here there is the market uh, on which we will go tomorrow morning early. And as you can see here, we have dem and den, if you are already a professional, then you see, okay, yeah, dem is dativ und den is most probably accusativ, and that's correct. But this means auf has, can have two cases, right? It's accusativ or dativ. Which brings us to the bonus tip. Wechselpräpositionen. Those prepositions, those nine prepositions here, are so-called Wechselpräpositionen, two-way prepositions, and they follow certain rules. And for relative clauses with prepositions, you also have the same rules, actually. Let's go back to the example. Hast du ein Tablet, auf dem du schreiben kannst? This is dative. Why? Because you are writing something. You're not going from A to B. There is no movement involved. Therefore, it is dative. So it answers the question, wo? And the second example, here is the Markt, auf den wir morgen früh gehen. Gehen is 
a movement. You go from A to B, probably from home and to the market. And that's a movement, therefore you have to use accusative. It answers the question, wohin, where to. If Wechselpräpositionen doesn't sound so familiar to you, we have a complete video here only about Wechselpräpositionen in detail. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen. I hope you learned something. I hope to see you again. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss und bye bye.